and welcome to the Wandering Creatives Podcast. I'm your host, Allie Coots, and joining me today is returning guest, Amanda Duncan of The Silky. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming back and being on the podcast again. You are, well, first, you're my first returning guest, I believe, that I've had on the pod. So Nice. You're, like, checking off all these... Ch- ch- firsts in the in the podcast but you were also one of the first guests that I recorded with back in the day many episodes ago episode three of the podcast you were on and we kind of talked about your journey to opening up your own shop your jewelry business and kind of what your goals are with your store and it was an amazing conversation and it is one of the top listened to episodes of the podcast nice yeah. Thanks, everybody. It's super dope. Everyone loves that podcast, mm-hmm. loves that episode. And that's episode three. So if you are curious about learning more about who Amanda is and how she got started with her jewelry business and then also the opening of the Silky, definitely go and listen to that episode because we are going to be jumping straight into today's topic, which is to talk about wholesale and being a wholesaler and amanda is both of she is a she sells her jewelry jewelry wholesale I'm ha- these are all <laughs> these are all words that i struggle with anything with like e's and l's and r's i so this is like my worst nightmare <laughs> But you just say it like four times real fast. <laughs> I don't know. I can't even say it once slowly. So. <laughs> jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. Yeah. I Go for it, I Allie. Can't. Come on. You got I it. You got it. not. So you <laughs> sell jewelry wholesale, and then you also purchase items wholesale from other makers and creatives to sell in the silky. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh my gosh. So you are uniquely poised to answer all of our wholesale questions based on your personal experiences that you've had. And I cannot wait to dive in because I know personally I'm very interested about wholesale and what that experience has been like for you. And yeah, and just pumped to have you on the podcast again. Yeah, well, I'm excited to be back. That was such a fun experience. And so I'm looking forward to being a part of it again. To, to part two. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But yeah, as far as like getting into wholesale and consignment, I, I will kind of start off with a disclaimer that I do not have a business degree or I'm not certified, but I do have a lot of first-hand experience and practical knowledge, which for me, especially as a business owner, has been very beneficial to meet people who have first-hand knowledge about how things work. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times it gets explained a little bit better. So I'm hoping that that's the case. You know, I don't know what level of like (laughs) moron I'm at today. So (laughs) we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I guess to start off, you know, the the basic difference between wholesale and consignment. Wholesale, you're usually looking at a, a 50-50 split as a buyer and a seller. Mm-hmm. So you have a product that you are wanting to get out in the world outside of your own personal retail realm. And you're getting it out into the world by selling it to other businesses who are going to resell it for you. And you're doing that usually at a 50-50 split. Hmm. So if an item is retailing for $14, most of the time wholesale is going to be $7. And consignment, on the other hand, is totally different in that you know, wholesale, you're kind of setting a minimum purchase requirement. A buyer will come in and purchase a quantity of, of something and it then belongs to them. Mm -hmm. So as a gift shop owner, when I purchase wholesale, those items, you know, belong to me. So I I purchase a set number of of items from a business at a wholesale price. They belong to me. I put them in the gift shop. I resell them. I get my cost plus, you know, money back Mm -hmm. on top of that for reselling. Um, Consignment, on the other hand, is a little bit different. I mean, there are pros and cons to both that, you know, we can definitely get into. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can kind of give you perspective from both sides of the fence. As a business owner, 
who is doing wholesale and consignment and a business owner who is purchasing Mm -hmm. wholesale and having consignment vendors come in to the gift shop. Yeah. Consignment really means that your products belong to you until they sell. And consignment splits are a little bit different. And, you know, they're usually like a 30-70 split with the consignment vendor getting 70% or 35-65, somewhere kind of in that that ballpark. Mm -hmm. So you get a higher return on your item. So as a creative, if you make something that's $10 and you put it in a gift shop on consignment, you're going to get a higher return, more money in your pocket when that item sells than you would with wholesale. Okay. So anybody in my gift shop that is consignment, that property belongs to that creative until it is sold. When it is sold, it is then my property. Like I have sold it, I've made money off of it, and then I do a payout each month to give that consignment vendor their their cut of the sale. Hmm. So that's just kind of like a quick breakdown, and we can kind of get into more of that, too. Oh, we are. <laughs> We're going to get down into the nitty-gritty. So, All right. And and for reference, I actually have products in the Silky that are consignment. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have this podcast, is I'm always curious about doing wholesale and, like, learning more about it. And definitely, like you were saying, one of the major differences is with wholesale – it is, like you said, like commonly a 50-50 split, whereas with consignment, you're get, you will hopefully be getting a little bit more yeah. back from what you're selling. Um, and I am definitely curious about the pros and the cons, which we will get into, especially from someone who's doing both sides of, of the selling and the buying. But when someone's looking at doing wholesale versus consignment, why might some creatives or small businesses choose to do wholesale over consignment? Like, are there, would you say there are more benefits to one than the other? Not necessarily. And I really think a lot of it is dependent on the type of business Mm. that you're either doing wholesale or consignment with or what your business is and what makes sense. So I guess really what I'm sharing today is more from a, a retail perspective, Mm -hmm. gift shop perspective, you know, consignment and wholesale is going to work totally different in, you know, the restaurant industry, or if you're an art gallery, you know, those consignment splits and art galleries are totally different because that's a different layout, um, different price point than just kind of standard retail, what I have, you know, and wholesale is also going to look very different if you're in, you know, the, the restaurant industry, or if you own a brewery, Mm. you know, all of that is, is going to be different. And I don't know that there is an advantage one over the other necessarily. I think it's more so about knowing, knowing your business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anybody who is starting up a business or if you have a business and you're ready to move forward and get your product into other locations, this is where I push people to have a a very heightened level of accountability and understanding what it is you are doing. Mm -hmm. Because every business is totally different and there's not a formula that's going to make that there's not really a standard formula Mm -hmm. that you can follow. So, You know, if if you're a fiber artist, so I have a lot of fiber artists Mm -hmm. in my gift shop. And fiber artists, you know, are are individuals who do any kind of embroidery, basket weaving. I have loom weavers. Usually those types of of crafts take a considerable amount of time. Yeah. So for somebody to be competitive, especially if you are creating your own product, own product. Essentially, nowadays, what you're doing is competing against big box companies. Mm. You know, and I think we talked a little bit about that in the last episode. So you can't, you, I don't want to say never, but most of the time as a small business owner or creative, you're not going to get money back for all the time and effort you put into your product. That's yeah. just the nature <laughs> of the beast. That's just what it is right now. That being said, if, if what you're doing takes a lot more time and effort 
to make because there is such a huge time commitment involved in making that product. Yeah. Most of the time, consignment's going to make more sense. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to have a, a limited number of items in a gift shop on consignment that you will sell and get more money back from than, say, if you tried to do wholesale. Mm -hmm. Wholesale is more bulk. bulk. Yeah. So you, it, it's kind of, you are either at a place in your business where you are efficient enough to move a lot of product out very quickly, mm -hmm. or you're making something that has a low price point as far as the manufacturing side of it. So the, the financial and the time component in making that product makes sense that you can wholesale mm -hmm. and move a whole bunch of product out at one time yeah. than having product that is still technically yours and not officially purchased mm -hmm. sitting in multiple locations. Yeah. So I, I guess knowing what your business is, is really the first step in understanding what makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I can say from personal experience on both, both sides of the fence, as a jewelry owner, I started out doing consignment. It is a very good way to test product Mm, yeah. as a creative in a different location. It's a great way to pitch yourself to another retailer mm -hmm. and, you know, say, hey, you know, I make these amazing bracelets. Would you be willing to give them a try, you know, just on consignment and see what happens? And it's a way to kind of play around. And I do that a lot, especially businesses who are just starting out that come into the gift shop and they've not sold anywhere else before. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my thing is, you know, let's just put it on consignment and see what happens. We'll see what the feedback is, how interested people are. So that, you know, from owning a business and being give can be very beneficial at the beginning. Mm -hmm. As a business owner pulling in vendors, consignment is also very beneficial because there's not a lot of upfront cost. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's like zero. Well, there's you don't, really, you don't there's no drop. upfront cost. Yeah, you don't have to drop like a bunch <laughs> yeah, of money. Yeah, so you're not putting, you don't have a lot of overhead mm. is, is you know, kind of the perks of having consignment. So when I started the sell, I think a majority of the business owners that I had were consignment. And I intentionally did it that way just to make sure I understood the demographic that was shopping in the gift shop. Yeah. That I didn't have it too far off the mark. It was also in the middle of a pandemic. Mm. So, you know, I had Start no slow. idea. Yeah, <laughs> I had no idea what was going to happen. Um, you know, and, and the return, you know, the it's not as good. You have to move as a gift shop owner. The only the tricky side to having consignment when you start out is that you have to move a lot of product mm -hmm. because make anything yeah yeah to make stuff because you're you're paying out vendors sixty five percent of what's coming in so you have to understand and make sure that that thirty five thirty to thirty five percent of income that's coming in is going to pay your lease your you know your mm -hmm. rent your utilities, your phone line, internet, all that kind of stuff. All so, of it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And you mentioned, so I know this is a conversation you and I have had many times, but like the pricing aspect of it is or can be difficult. And I think a lot of creatives struggle with knowing how much to charge. Sure. And when it comes to wholesale, I imagine it might be a little easier to figure out. So like as a sticker maker, if I go and purchase, because I don't make my own stickers, but you know, I'm thinking about doing wholesale. So let's say I order a hundred stickers online. It costs me, we'll say hypothetically $50 for a hundred stickers. And then I can go on a wholesale site of some sort and put those out there. Right. <laughs> and then I could inflate the price, I guess, per sticker if I wanted to yeah, and make back the cost of having purchased them and plus a little bit. Yes. yes. That's kind of how it works. Yeah. So or essentially, yeah. What, so what you're really doing with wholesale, you're, you're breaking it down in two different ways. So, you know, if you, if you've got something that you're retailing for $20. Like we can use one of my bracelets. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I sell my leather bracelets for, for 20 bucks. I, I do a little bit better than 50 
percent mm-hmm. from our wholesale. Oh, no. Okay. Just because I'm efficient enough that I can pass that along to people who are purchasing from me. So I do like a 52-48 split, but we'll just keep it like 50-50. Mm-hmm. So my wholesale price, if you just kind of go with the standard 50-50 split, is $10. So now that we have that price point, you've got to take it and break it down again. Mm -hmm. So within that $10, I have to look at the cost, you know, that's there for me to make the bracelet. And so that's the money to pay the lease for the laser, you know, the monthly cost for Corel Draw, which is the graphic suite that I use. I price out my leather per square inch. So I buy mm-hmm. a whole roll of leather and I, pri- I price it out per square inch. So I know exactly how much money I'm spending for each square inch. Now, of course, you know that a lot of that is guessing mm-hmm. or doing an estimation, but you know, I'm, I'm pricing out leather that I'm covering the leather pieces that I'm not using. Mm-hmm. So you want to cover your waste material too, like okay. anything that's kind of throwaway. You want to make sure that you're you're adding that into the cost of manufacturing. Snaps, dye, leather conditioner, my gas money to go back and forth to purchase these items. So all of those things are taken into consideration. And so what happens is you end up with a, a price point mm-hmm. for your product. You know exactly how much it costs to make that one single bracelet. Once you have that, you definitely want to add in some of your time. You Mm -hmm. know, this, this is a process, you know, hand dyeing leather is a process, having it air dry, assembling it with snaps, all of that stuff is a process, you know, marketing, doing any kind of promotions, all of those things are expenses and you have to kind of roll it in. And I know it seems kind of crazy to roll it into like one single price, but you have to, mm-hmm. or else you're going to go into the hole. You yeah. know, you're, you're not going to cover um, expenses, you know, sh- shipping, packaging, all of it. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to have an exact number, but you can have a good estimate for just about everything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, once you have that, you want to add in a little bit of time and then you want to double that. So... You want to, even within your wholesale price, you want to have 100% markup if you can Mm -hmm. or a 50% profit margin. So both of those, you know, 100% markup um, means that I'm taking the cost and the time it takes to make my bracelet, so $5, and I'm doing 100% markup, so it's 10, which gives me a 50% profit margin. And that's really kind of a sweet spot. Now, the, the goal of pricing your products that way is that at the beginning, you're always going to eat it. And that's what I tell mm-hmm. people. You're, you're going to eat it for a little while until you get efficient enough and you can work with distributors on a different level to get pieces and parts in mm-hmm. to make whatever you're doing. You know, you can get them a little bit cheaper when you work with a distributor, um, So it'll take a little while to get to that point where you're super efficient and then you'll start increasing your, your profit margin. Oh, okay. So, so that's how you have to kind of break it down. So within your wholesale price, you still need to be making double the cost, you know, that it it costs you to make that product. That's not always going to be the case. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're not going to quite get, you know, that. 50% 50% profit margin, a lot of times you're not going to be able to offer a 50-50 whole, wholesale split. Mm-hmm. It just depends on what it is, but that's kind of the goal is to stay in that that area. That sweet spot there. Yeah, in that sweet spot. That's kind of, you know, a, a good way to look at it. And even if you're kind of locked into looking at places for, you know, that are consignment-based, like mm-hmm. retail location, it is also really good if you can to price your products for retail like you would potentially be doing wholesale. Ah, okay. Yeah. Even if you are only ever going to do consignment, it's a really good practice to go ahead and set yourself up that way. And, you know, one one of the things you mentioned, which is funny because I totally did this, as a startup and as a creative and an artist, I think 
everybody across the board, unless you are super, super confident and you know exactly what you're doing. And I have met people who are like that, totally undercut themselves. Yes. Underprice everything. Yes. Yeah. And so the the problem with that and not sitting down and really looking at the breakdown of money and how things are being spent to manufacture and Mm -hmm. what your retail cost should be, if you're not pre-factoring in a wholesale situation, if you decide to go into a wholesale situation, you're, you've set yourself up to fail Yeah, because, or, or to not make any money. Yeah. I mean, essentially you're just going to be breaking even, <laughs> which, which is not the goal of business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully you can come out in the green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in a perfect example of this, I went to an art market in Cary and I came across this vendor who had these handmade wooden toys that I absolutely loved. They were, oh, they were cool. I mean, they were really great. And when he told me the price point, I was really kind of surprised because it was they were priced ridiculously low for, mm. for the quality and what they were. You know, and I, I have no shame. I will totally, like, solicit myself. <laughs> like, hey, you want to you wanna be in my gift shop? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he he kind of started on this rant about how business owners are only out to make a, a buck and, you know, that he was going to get ripped off and yeah. this and that. And and it was funny because I was listening to him and, I, you know, I've been on the other side of that. Mm-hmm. It can be a little bit jarring and a little bit of a shock when you decide you want to move your product into a a gift shop, you know, and outside your retail of doing markets. Mm -hmm. Um, And all of a sudden you realize that the profit margin you were making selling at a market is now not non-existent because somebody's either pulling out a consignment fee or they're wanting to do wholesale. And you're like, oh man, I can't can't do that and make any money. And a lot of it is just from the get-go pricing product in a way that sets you up to be successful at wholesaling or consignment Mm. and believing that your product is worth that retail value. It's so hard. It's definitely one of those things that's easier said than done. It's a (laughs) And that's a conversation, like we have talked about it a lot because it's, yeah, like you said, I think almost all creatives and makers at some point kind of go through that of, I don't know, figuring out, yeah, what you can actually, what you should price your stuff at and what you feel like it's worth because a lot of us feel like it's not worth as much as what it should be charged, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. No, I feel absolutely. like I mangled that sentence. <laughs> no, 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 it totally makes sense. And, you know, I will say, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing to – do some test markets and kind of, mm. you know, if you're just, especially if you're just starting out and see how product moves mm-hmm. and move the price point around a little bit. But, you know, that's definitely a mistake that I personally made mm-hmm. that was ginormous, was not factoring in, you know, my goal was always to go into other retail locations. Yeah. You know, that was definitely what I wanted to do. I just didn't have my product originally priced in a way that would allow me to do that and make money. Did you, because you said you started with consignment. Did you do consignment for a while before moving into wholesale or did you kind of just do both? Like, was it simultaneously or kind of a gradual move from one to the other? Um, it was definitely a probably more gradual than big truck. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, listeners, big truck. <laughs> uh, so one, I'm using new equipment today and the audio is uh, freaking fantastic if you, you know, ask me my opinion about it. But that being said, it also is the mics are so great that we can hear a little bit of a background noise. We are recording at the Selkie as we did in the first episode that we recorded together. So there's a little bit of historic Wilson downtown vehicle ASMR going on in the background. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. But yeah, 
yes, there's an occasional vehicle passing yeah. by that you can hear. No revving engines this time, though. Yeah, no <laughs> revving engines this time. But it's becoming a, a common thing as, as I record more down here in the historic downtown Wilson. So I don't yeah. think it's a bad thing. It's kind of soothing in my headphones. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah. I forgot what we, were, we were talking about going from... Uh, oh, wholesale your, to go. Yeah, yeah, I was sitting there and I was like, oh, man, I don't remember what we were just talking about. <laughs> your, your journey, if it was simultaneously going from consignment or and wholesale at the same time or if there was like a gradual kind of journey that you went on yeah so I I you know I started off with consignment um and I I don't think it was intentional at all I think the business owners that I just came across happened to do consignment and were set up to do more consignment than wholesale who started me off as consignment and then as she began to grow and get bigger it was more efficient and productive for her to order wholesale and so Mm -hmm. she was the one who encouraged me to go ahead and start doing a switch over to wholesale and so that's kind of what happened and then I slowly started moving all of the other stores over to wholesale, um, just for efficiency's sake. Mm. It, it, it is a lot, and I guess that's, you know, another avenue we can go down if you want. The, the benefit of consignment, you know, is obviously that you don't have to put a massive amount of product in a specific location. You have the flexibility to swap stuff in and yeah. out. Um, and like I said, you know, the, the big draw is that you're going to make more mm-hmm. money off of wholesale. The powerful part of wholesale as a creative is that you don't have to keep track of inventory. Yeah, that's nice. That's that's great. So if you aren't like sitting down with, you know, your your spreadsheet and keeping track of how much product you have in which store and which location, if that is not your thing, don't do consignment. Just just. Just do a big sidestep and walk down another path. Yeah, I'm like, that doesn't sound... Yeah. But, yeah, no thanks. Yeah, because, I mean, in all honesty, it, you know, you are the one that's liable for your own product in mm-hmm. the gift shop. So if something gets stolen, a business owner is not responsible for it. Yeah. In theory. I mean, it is, like, your product still. You know, I personally don't do that. You know, if, if I've only had one thing swiped, which... As far as I know, you know, and that happened to be a consignment vendor and I reimbursed mm-hmm. her for it. Oh, nice. That's very nice of you. Yeah. So I just, you know, it wholesale will keep everything very orderly. You'll have an invoice. You'll have billed them for the product. You ship the product out. You don't have to think about it anymore. So that, you know, is, is a big plus side to wholesale especially if you are, your goal is to continue to grow. Mm-hmm. It, it's a way to keep yourself organized, less worry, less overhead in other mm-hmm. locations that you don't have to keep track of. No, that's nice. That, yeah. that My ADHD mind likes that better. It's less organized. <laughs> it's yeah. organized, but less that you personally are like accountable for. So that's quite appealing. Yeah. For your jewelry business, do you use, because there are websites out there like Bear and I think Abound yeah. are popular ones for wholesales, wholesalers. <laughs> for bot for yeah one of those do you use any platforms to sell your jewelry or like how did how does how did that work for you yeah so initially i started out just invoicing like doing direct invoicing through paypal was the platform i used mm. you know and then fair became very very popular and that is a wholesaling platform. Mm. So it is designed for anybody who has a product that they wish to wholesale to set up a shop that retailers can log into and create an account and um, purchase directly from you for their location, for their retail location. Mm -hmm. These platforms are pretty much the norm nowadays as far as getting your work out there. They're very user-friendly. I am currently, for my jewelry business, I'm currently on a bound and I've got 50 retailers across the U.S. And so that's the big part of it is that all of a sudden, you know, you set up a shop on the wholesale platform. You know, these platforms have access to retailers. You know, you could never cold call, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, you've got tens of thousands of retailers 
who are looking for product who could potentially come across your wholesale shop on a bound or fair. I think there's Tundra. Bulletin is another one. I feel like there are a whole bunch of other platforms that are kind of popping up. Do you, when you use, like you said, you're on a bound, do you have to do or do you have the option to like advertise your shop or does a bound, you know, do you just build your shop and then kind of cross your fingers and hope a store comes in and wants your product? Or is there any kind of like, I guess, marketing done on there. Okay. So my experience with Abound and the way they have, you know, each wholesale platform is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of look at which one fits your personality and how you want to sell stuff. Mm -hmm. So Abound works on momentum points. So when you open up your shop, you start off, I think, well, when I, when I started, I don't know if it's different now. I started off with 200. You're, and every time you make a a sale Mm -hmm. in that order is delivered, you get another set of points. So they don't promote you on their catalogs based on like paid promotions. So I can't buy my way to a higher rank on a catalog page in the jewelry tab. They, They don't let you do that. So it's all based on how viable your product is. Oh, okay. So if you're selling well mm-hmm. and you're getting good feedback and you have people coming back in to purchase your product again, you know, you get, it's a point-based system. Okay. Nice. And, you know, a lot of times they try really hard to do demo videos for new businesses. And so I was very fortunate that when I set up my shop, I was asked to to mail out product because they're based in California. I believe it's originally like a UK based wholesale platform, but Mm. to mail out to California for their blogger to do a video demo. Oh, wow. And so she did that and it was posted. And so I got a lot of views and a lot of interest because of that video, which was really incredible. And I think they try and do that as much as possible, sample products and that's super nice. Yeah. No, it's it's really cool. Oh, go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say, and, and that reminds me of another thing. If you decide to go on these wholesale platforms, mm-hmm. understand that there is a co- there's a commission. There is a fee that's going to get pulled out of your sales. So, okay. you know, if you are wholesaling, also take that into account. Yeah. Don't <laughs> that price. Just, it's gonna, yeah. I mean, Make it's sure like your empty. price is going to is going to absorb that. You know, a bound starts out taking twenty five percent of what you, your, your sale is. And then if you have a return customer, it drops down to 15. If they come back a third time, I believe it drops down to 10. Okay. So, you know, the, the more loyal your customers, the better you are. And a lot of them, you know, if you already have a customer as a wholesale client, you can, I know on fair, you can enter them in as an existing wholesale account and fair won't take any fees at oh, all Wonderful from that. So, you know, they, they've got pros and cons, you know, it, it really is about finding a good fit. Some people, you know, as far as the two big ones, I think abound and fair, mm-hmm. the big ones, especially fair. You yeah. Know? You know, I think some people like both. Some people prefer fair. Some people prefer abound. It's just whatever works for Yeah. Whatever, whatever works. Whatever you like. Yeah. Oh, no, that was good to know. Cause I'm, again, I'm myself, I'm curious about, doing wholesale so it's it's good to know these things <laughs> it's always good to know what advice besides what you've already given us which the big one i definitely think is figuring out your pricing before you go into wholesale or consignment so besides the pricing what other advice do you have for businesses that are looking to sell their goods wholesale i think the the biggest thing about wholesale is understanding the nature of wholesale. It is intense, especially if you grow very quickly. Mm. It can be very exciting at the beginning, but when you are putting together 80 bracelets <laughs> and doing all the other things. And your hands are bleeding. Yeah. Like, you, know, <laughs> you, you need to make sure you are able to pace yourself. And there are ways that you can do that to kind of... Um, keep the brakes pumped so you're not overwhelmed by wholesale. So, you know, if you 
figure out your wholesale price. You've got a great product. You launch it on, you know, Fair or Abound or one of these other wholesale platforms. And all of a sudden, you know, you always kind of want to set a minimum purchase requirement for wholesale. Some people don't have one and that's totally for me. I feel like that's dangerous. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's it can be kind of crazy because you don't want somebody you Wait, know like can you do a max purchase op- option or is that you know like if you not only really. want to sell like 50 of something at a time, can you say like that's all you can buy at one time is 50? I don't think they have it set up that oh way. Gosh. I'd have to check. But but the mm-hmm. thing is is that, you know, retailers and I, I can say this because I'm a gift shop owner. I'm not going to go in, like if you're selling stickers, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go in and order like a <laughs> hundred stickers of, you know, like 20 different designs. I'm yeah. not, not going to do that because the price for me is not going to make sense. Yeah. And generally, like if, if a business goes in to do a large wholesale order, I know this fall... I'm going to have to start getting ready. God, the wind is so crazy. I can hear it in my headphones. I'm watching the trees right now. Folks, we may be in a tornado right now. Oh, Lord. <laughs> the wind is like, I keep that looking so behind crazy. Amanda. I know. I can like, see the trees. Like, is something about to happen? <laughs> blowing in the back. And again, listeners, you will, I think, be able to hear this in your headphones. There's, you know, you've got vehicle ASMR and also wind, rain, tornado-esque ASMR happening today on the podcast. We're just keeping it interesting. <laughs> you know. You know. Oh, it's an intense podcast. Yes, yes. It, with it's, Allie. It's adding a, a mood to the podcast. <laughs> we may or may not make it out alive. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, oh, Lord, Allie, where was I? I think we were talking about how minimum and maximum. Like, a store's oh, not going to yeah, come yeah. in okay. and buy... You know, I, if somebody comes in and makes a, a crazy large order, they're going to be very patient. Mm-hmm. I'm always going to reach out to a creative who is hand making like porcelain earrings. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm going to make a crazy large order. You know, I know on the wholesale platform, your shipping date is like eight to 15 days. Mm-hmm. Don't stress out about it. You know, just get it to me within a month. You know, it, it, Business people understand, you know, the wholesale world, and they're, they're not going to throw something at you, at least I hope not. That's going to be totally overwhelming. Yeah. But you do want to set a minimum purchase requirement so that, you know, if, if you're selling something, it makes sense for you to make a product and ship it out. Yeah. You don't want, like, I don't want to be making just, like, one bracelet to a retailer and and shipping it out. That's not logical. You know, you really want to have, like, a hundred, around a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred bucks is pretty typical for across the board as far as, like, a minimum purchase requirement for wholesale. So, yeah. So much information, Amanda. So, listeners, drink my diet. Cool. We're gonna we're gonna cut this episode a little short, just because of the weather and things that are happening. <laughs> but why? I would not be surprised if Amanda makes another appearance on the podcast in the future because she has so much knowledge. And I would really love to hear from you if you have questions about wholesale or consignment you can send those in to me on social media or you can call or text us on our hotline 252-419-6004 with any questions for me for amanda for any of my guests and we will include them on a future episode of the podcast be sure to follow the selkie on social media which i will include in the podcast description but it's the selkie north carolina nc on social media, I believe. Yes, sorry. Oh, it took me a second. Like, I think so. <laughs> yeah, the Selkie and C. There we yeah. go. And I will include that in the episode description. And as always, thank you so much for guesting on the podcast. Absolutely. And thank you for listening. And hopefully we don't blow away. <laughs> Find us a nice little corner. <laughs> yes, yes. Away from windows. Uh, and be sure to like, rate, and review the podcast. Thanks for listening to the Wandering Creatives Podcast, a CEI media production. Please like, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast as it helps us greatly. You can follow us on Instagram at Wandering Creatives Pod and on Facebook at Wandering Creatives Podcast. If you would like to support the podcast, you can become a Patreon for just $5 a month. The link is in the episode description.